welcome to the Mr. Mike channel. In my Mikhail Kalishnikov life story video, I quoted Gregory Spoggin, Complexity is easy, simplicity is difficult. Another firearm that lives up to this quote is the Beretta M 1934. As is obligatory to say in any Beretta video, Beretta is the oldest firearms manufacturer in the world, as well as the oldest family run company in the world, dating back to Bartolomeo Beretta in 1526. By the early 1900s, Pietro Beretta was the head of the company. Tullio Maragoni was a friend of Pietro's nephew and grew up near the factory in Brescia. He used his connections to get hired on the company without any formal training and was completely self-taught. This is a very fortuitous hire for Beretta as he designed many submachine guns and started the lineage of the great Beretta pistol line. At the beginning of World War I, the Italian sidearm was the Glacenti 1910 which fired the 9x19mm Glacenti round, basically a neutered 9mm Luger round, dimensionally identical but 25-30% to 30 less charge. Beretta needed a big contract, and the Glacenti was a rather complex pistol to produce and use. Maragoni set to developing Beretta's first auto pistol. This was a simple blowback pistol that fired the 9mm Glacenti round, and was adopted as the model 1915 for secondary use by the Italian army just a month after Italy entered the war. This was the first pistol to sport the classic Beretta open slide for simplicity and weight savings, although there was a separate hole for case ejection. This pistol, along with the Beretta M1918 submachine gun, which used components from the Vieler Perosa, Vetterli Vitali, and Carcano, saw Marangoni promoted to the head of development. There was an update in 1917 for the pistol to fire the 32 ACP making a simpler, more compact handgun. Although neutered, the 9mm Glacenti was still a rather powerful round for a simple blowback gun, creating the need for a buffer spring. The 1915 also had both a trigger lock safety and a hammer lock safety. The 1917 got rid of the hammer lock safety, making the pistol much simpler to produce. An update in 1919 for the civilian market, which had a later military adaptation as the Model 1922, saw the full slide cutout you see in Beretta pistols to this day, with the front sight on the slide as opposed to the barrel, a revised ejection port, and a longer barrel although the whole pistol itself was shorter. The Model 1923 was basically a larger frame Model 1922 that fired the 9mm Glacenti and had an exposed hammer. Since it used the neutered Glacenti round, there weren't many buyers. Beretta even claimed that it could shoot the 9mm Luger, although that wasn't really safe. The 1931 saw the frame get smaller and fired the AC 32 ACP. The big difference for the shooter was the safety throw went from 90 degrees to 180. This is something that I'll get to a bit when it comes to shooting. We finally come to the 1934. The model 1934 was chambered 9 by 17 millimeter Corta, aka 9 millimeter short, and most famously known as 380 ACP and the nearly identical 1935 and 32 ACP. It added a palm swell to the grip which makes more comfortable shooting. It added a half cock safety to the exposed hammer. It lacked features such as a magazine disconnect and loaded chamber indicator as seen on German contemporaries, but this also eliminated milling operations making it simpler to produce and it was only 39 parts. It is a rugged and easily maintained pistol which helps mitigate the underwhelming 380 cartridge. Early contracts for the 1934 were for police and port militia use, but Beretta received a huge order in June 1936 for 150,000 1934 pistols and it was officially adopted in October 1936. The Army looked to add a Walther-like slide safety, but this would have added production time and complexity to the pistol so it stayed as is. As the war begun, Beretta would receive huge orders from 1934s. They would continue to have a blued finish until the very end of the war where they would finally receive a phosphate finish. For pistols that were made up until the armistice with the Allies in 1943, it is rather simple to tell which year the pistol was made since the year is not only marked with Arabic numerals but the fascist year in Roman numerals. October 29, 1922 would begin year one. Mine was made in 1942, or the 21st fascist year. Other markings to look for are RE for the Army, RM for the Navy, or RA for the Air Force. There was a decent sized order by Romania, in which the pistols would say 9mm skirt instead of corta, 
and the fascist date removed, and a small order to Finland in which he would find either a SK.Y marking for the Civil Guard or an SA marking for the Army. After the armistice, Beretta was located in the German-occupied north of Italy, so there were some made under German control, although they discontinued the 1934 and produced the 1935 only until after the war. Prior to German control, serial numbers ranged from 500,000 to 999,999, and then it started with the F block. This is followed by the G block, and then the AA and BB suffix blocks. After the war, production began again with the C block in 1946, and the 1934 pistol would be produced until 1991, with the T prefix ending the final block. A total of nearly 1.1 million pistols were produced. Although the pistol lacked stopping power, it ran well in all climates from the Sahara to the Eastern Front. And since the 380 was chosen for economical purposes, as well as the pistol's ease of production, this ensured that more high-quality pistols made it into the hands of soldiers out in the field, as opposed to using antiquated firearms to fill the gaps. It was a treasured pickup for Allied soldiers, as it made for a great backup pistol. One historical side note with the Beretta 1934. Like the Carcano, it is perhaps most famous for a successful assassination attempt, as a Beretta 1934 was used by Naturam Gazi to assassinate Mahatma Gandhi on January 30, 1948. What do I think shooting this and blatantly ripping off CN Arsenal would I take it in a battle relative to its peers? The pistol definitely has some very good points, but some major detractions. The good. The palm swell, as well as that little European pinking extension at the end of the mag, makes it fit very well in my hand. It is well balanced and parallels well with the 380 round. For World War II use, I would rank it fourth in the major pistols produced behind the P38, 1911, and Tokarov, and give it a soft yes if asked if I would take it into battle. The reason for yes. Simple, rugged, and know it'll go bang. The reason for a soft yes, as mentioned, the 380 round, there's not much to the sight picture, and that damn safety. Not only is it halfway up the frame where it's difficult to reach, but you have to index it 180 degrees, which exacerbates that. A quick draw where you have to manipulate the safety with one hand is impossible for most people, and you need your offhand to flip it off. And to me, that is the one major drawback to the 1934. Please be aware of where your elected officials and the groups that claim to represent you stand on the Constitution. Please join the GOA. Click my link below for 25% off your membership. And a side note, I do not receive a kickback from that. What do you think this is? The NRA? If you like what you see, please check out my other videos, like, share, and subscribe. Also check out my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and who I support on Patreon. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a great day.